when you give it some throttle, it starts the supercharger, gets it up to 5,500 RPM, and then the turbocharger kicks in and basically makes power all the way to redline. I'm Larry Chen. I've been shooting car culture all over the world for the past 18 years. From the best builds to the fastest races, I've seen it all. In this series, I'm highlighting the gearheads that inspire me in our generation. The Elite Showcase is the largest modified car gathering in all of Indonesia. It's essentially their SEMA show. There were so many incredible builds there, but one definitely stood out to me and I knew I needed to shoot it the next day. I met up with Andre the Builder and we did a deep dive into this incredible Mitsubishi Evo. Thanks for coming. No problem. It's been an honor. This is, without a doubt, the craziest Evo I've ever seen. Of course, the first question is why? I build more powerful EVOs for drag racing. So this one, I build it to be a unique EVO. It's very unique. Yeah. So then it's twin charged. You have a supercharger set up yeah. and then it has a, a very diet. extensively modified turbocharge setup. Is this a two liter still? Uh, 2.1. So I stroke it up a little bit. Stroked 2.1. Yeah. I don't even know what to ask next, okay. <laughs> Just to explain this as simply as possible, the air intake from the filter has two paths directed by a butterfly valve. On full throttle, air is first routed through the supercharger to help spool the turbo from idle to 5,500 RPM. Once the engine reaches 5,500 RPM, the butterfly valve is fully open and air flows directly into the turbo, bypassing the supercharger. When this happens, there is a magnetic clutch on the supercharger pulley that completely disengages and allows the pulley to free spin on the supercharger, removing any parasitic loss of power. From 5,500 RPM to 9,000 RPM redline, it's all turbo power from there. So then, potentially, you can run this mm -hmm. without the supercharger at all. Yeah. And then basically, I, this is completely open. Yeah, correct. I tried. And then, how does it run without the supercharger active? The turbo actually is uh, very, very leggy. The size is 76 millimeter. So generally, it's a size GT42. And I think that's a giant for this kind of displacement. How many of these sort of systems exist in the world? Around five, I think. Two or three in the UK, one here, and if I'm not wrong, one in the US. The kit is sold by a guy in the UK named Norris. And when I purchase, there's not like just plug and play. There's still a lot of fabrication and we still need to do a lot of things to make this work. The question is, mm -hmm. where did you learn all this stuff? How do you know how to even put all this stuff together? Actually, it's my first try. Previously, I built generally Evo, just big turbos, rough racing and kind of like that. So yeah, it, it's like a challenge for me. My good friend and my customer, purchase and send the car to me. He just said he wanted a unique Evo. How long did it take for you to build this? Around 12 to 15 months. And then did you have to take it down all the way to bare metal? All. Everything, Everything. every bolt off. Yeah, including the suspension, the drive, uh, differentials, everything. So all rubbers, all, all mounts, all new. The interior, 
we just try to match the green color. So originally a black SR7 Recaro. Is the body any different at all? No, the body actually is a stock Evo 5. The brakes is actually a brake from Evo 10. And that's big for this car. Did this ever come with drive-by wire? Yeah. All of the Evo I did, I use uh, AEM issue, the Infinity. Mm -hmm. it, it works good for me. So on this setup, mm -hmm. is it running pump gas or race gas? or wh yeah. What is it it's running? It's running pump gas. And how much power does it make? Around 600. And it's not really so much about the peak horsepower because Correct. you potentially could make more. Yeah, with, with race gas. But it's about the response. It's like instant response compared to like if you just ran the big turbo. Yeah, correct. So then what does the owner actually do with this car? Leave it at my house. So that way you can enjoy it? Yeah. He never drove this car. Never? Never. All right. something unique. Mm -hmm. The owner wanted something that really is so rare, but he's never driven it and it's existed for a couple years now. Mm -hmm. What blows me away is I've seen that so much here in, in Indonesia where the owner just lets somebody else drive the car, yeah, but yeah. they just own it and they're enjoying it from the outside. It's interesting. I've never really seen anything like that in the world. Because, especially in the US, if you owned a car, mm -hmm. you're gonna wanna drive it yourself. Unless it's a collector car, you just let it sit. Yeah. You know, but know. the thing is, this is still getting driven. Should be. So how many kilometers is on this so thing? So basically the rally up speedometer is brand new. Yeah. So I got it from zero. Oh, okay. And then since you rebuilt the engine, uh -huh. it pretty much has this many kilometers on it? Yep. 224? Yeah. That's it? That's it. And there's air conditioning in this? Yes. It's a must here in Indonesia. Yeah, every single car here, all the performance cars uh -huh. have air conditioning. Because we, we don't have any winters. You guys in the US, I, I saw a lot of them uh, remove the AC. Yeah. Damn, looks so good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is so... It sounds so different from the inside! Really? It sounds so different! Do you notice know the chance over uh -huh. of the sound? Yeah. Oh, I think I heard it! You can hear it? It goes That changeover sound. I've never heard anything else like it. I like the power band more. It's like it, it doesn't stop pulling onto red line. Yeah. This is such a unique build. I feel like there needs to be more of these kind of builds. Like, this is such a good way to get rid of turbo lag. Yeah, yeah. It's very distinctive. You first hear the supercharged whine. It sounds like a supercharged vehicle. And then you hear this weird sound that wow. And then that's when the valve opens completely. Uh -huh. And then it just becomes a full on turbocharged car. So then if you're shifting, mm -hmm. for example, from second to third, mm -hmm. the valve stays open. Yeah. Right? Because the RP open. is it RPM based or is it uh, throttle based? What? Basically it's 3D, so RPM based, throttle based and load based. So is the Evo platform really popular here in, in Indonesia? 
in a street racing and drag racing, I think yes, one of the most popular and one of the fastest as, as well. Were there a lot of Evo 5s that were sold in Indonesia? Actually, no. Legally speaking, the Evo sold here only came from 6 until 10. So the Evo 6 was available to the Indonesian market. You could buy it from a showroom floor. Yeah. But the Evo 5, unless it was imported when it was new, uh -huh. it's impossible it's to get one simple. into this country. And unless there's know. certain, like a gray area. Yeah, and some of them is um, rally car that, that's been restored to, to normal car. Right, so some of them were probably brought into this country yeah. expecting it to just be off-road only, mm -hmm. but they're used for on-road yeah. now. No. In the US, the Evos are a dime a dozen. Evo 8, 9, 10, mm -hmm. they just get thrashed because they were relatively cheap. At one point when they were new, they were under $30,000, I think. Uh -huh. Here in Indonesia, it seems like there's a bigger sense of pride for these vehicles uh -huh. because they're so few and far between. You can probably count how many of these there are in the country, huh? How many fives are there? Maybe 20. 20? Yeah, not much. Well, you know, and that's why you take care of what you have. And on top of that, the price level is so different. <laughs> 